is now my favorite romance book of all time. This is one of the worst books I've ever read. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> welcome to another video. I am so excited for this reading only TikTok romance books video. And I wouldn't have thought I would ever say that because I would not consider myself to be the most romance reader person ever. I've had very mixed opinions and very mixed experiences with the romance books that I have read until this video. So I was kind of nervous getting into it, but I'm super excited to share what I thought of the three books that I read for this video. But first, a word from today's sponsor, Anna Luisa. Anna Luisa is a New York-based sustainable jewelry brand that makes their jewelry from clean, low impact, and recycled materials. I have worked with them for a couple of months already. I have received so many of their beautiful products and I love working with them because their jewelry is created in that sustainable way, but it's also super high quality. They produce everything ethically with respect to the people that make their jewelry, but also to the environment. They release limited run batches of their products every single week in order to minimize the waste that they make and like i said they only use recycled materials that come from either previously worn jewelry or electronic components and for instance their diamonds are actually lab grown so that you don't have to go through that whole mining process and today i'm actually wearing some of my favorite products so first off we have the noel necklace which has been created in collaboration with fellow booktuber noel gallagher and these two earrings that i absolutely adore wearing and recently over the past two months I've only been wearing this combination so I am obsessed they are currently running an amazing Mother's Day sale if you buy one you get your second one with a 40% discount which is absolutely amazing this way you and your mom can both wear beautiful sustainable jewelry pieces and you can get her a beautiful present So you only have to scroll on TikTok and you will immediately get so many romance recommendations. And the most popular one I think that came from TikTok is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. So let's first go on to my midway point thoughts on this book. <sighs> it's literally 5 p.m. and I'm wearing my PJs. <laughs> it's been a, well, I was gonna say rough, but it hasn't been rough. It's been a fun day with just a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure you have all heard of this book because it has been talked about so much in the past half year since it was published. We follow our main character, um, Olive, and she's currently doing like a PhD program in this like pancreatic cancer research lab. And if you didn't know that about me, I studied biomedical sciences myself for three and a half years. I have a bachelor's degree in it, which, <laughs> seems like a joke to me but okay basically this is like a romance that takes mostly place like on the biomedical laboratorium setting and olive accidentally kisses adam carlson who is one of the like highest professors i think like researchers in this laboratorium he's very strict he is not very kind to a lot of his like phd candidates master students whatever but they start like a fake relationship thing because olive wants her best friend to be okay with her dating olives ex date does that make any sense i don't know i feel like i'm making this synopsis way more complicated than it is it's a fake dating relationship romance and i'm pretty sure that adam carlson who is pictured right here is actually supposed to be kind of like a kylo ren ray romance situation i have no clue but i love kylo ren as you can tell i am way past the halfway point i have less than 100 pages to go but i just wanted to sort of tell you like midway what i think of this book until so far this is definitely a slow burn romance and i love that so much i believe there is talk about our main character or like hints of her being demisexual and I don't know like the exact definition of that sexuality but I feel like it is when people are only able to feel sexual attraction to someone when they have like more of an emotional connection and I actually really quite like the whole laboratorium setting I have very very little experience in a laboratorium setting I probably will not get any more experience in the future but from what I can tell I can recognize a lot of the terms a lot of the western blotting the proteins it's recognizable to me which I like the romance is slow burning and you get like little hints and bits of sexual tension 
and I like that a lot. So my ultimate thoughts on the love hypothesis is that I think that this is a solid romance for me. I'd probably give it a four out of five stars. I really, really enjoy this couple and also the really serious topics that were being dealt in this book because our main character worked in like the STEM industry in a biomedical lab and some really intense issues were being talked about such as the intensity of working on your PhD, how it basically consumes your whole life and power positions in science and how some people really, really misuse that power to the max and the consequences of that. Like I said, loved the pairing, the kind of like slow burn tension romance that they have. I feel like that is something that I really, really enjoy just because I don't like the insta lovey type of romance books. Let me know your recommendations in the comments. Okay, the second book that I read was Confess by Colleen Hoover. I had this book on my TBR for five plus years and I really wanted to pick up a Colleen Hoover book because she has been so hyped on TikTok. It's insane. <laughs> I have already read It Ends With Us about four years ago before it became popular. So I was already there guys before the trend happened. <laughs> so I didn't want to read that, but Confess was the only Colleen Hoover book that I still owned that I wanted to give a try. So the Goodreads synopsis says, Auburn Reed is determined to rebuild her shattered life and she has no room for mistakes. But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, she doesn't expect to become deeply attracted to the studio's enigmatic artist, Owen Gentry. For once, Auburn takes a chance and puts her heart in control only to discover that Owen is hiding a huge secret. The magnitude of his past threatens to destroy everything Auburn loves most and the only way to get her life back on track is to cut Owen out of it. But can she do it? This is what I thought of Confess. <laughs> um, so, uh, I finished Confess and this is one of the worst books I've ever read. <laughs> I, mm, I want to talk about spoilers so badly. So first let's give you like quick non-spoilery thoughts. Um, I think I give this one like a 1.5 to a two out of five stars. The thing with Colleen Hoover is at least like this book is I think five plus years old. So this is me saying it for her older work. But I know that when I read it, it's like not a plus high class literature. It won't be a new favorite book of mine. It is actually quite bad, but like the writing is so addictive and it's so easy, but that doesn't mean that I cannot critique this book. <laughs> I did not for one second ship our two love interests. I didn't think that they were great characters, especially our love interest is super possessive and so selfish. The things that he says to Auburn, our main character, I just don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. They felt really shallow to me. There wasn't a lot of depth. I also did not like where the plot was going one bit. The relationships besides like our love interests also weren't worked out that well. Conversations just felt kind of awkward. Just no, no. The only thing that I did like was the fact that our guy love interest, Owen, he is a painter and he creates all these paintings based on confessions that people leave behind at his studio. Besides that, I just want to throw this book out of the window. I wouldn't say this is a book that you have to read. So um, <laughs> if you want to get to know all of my spoilery reasons for why I didn't like this, then listen to me ranting about it. Let's get into spoilers. Owen is, I think, one of the most selfish and possessive men that I've ever read about. I was cringing so much about how he felt like he and Auburn were kind of like meant to be together because at the end of the book, we find out how Owen already like knew Auburn from back in the day. He sort of vaguely met her, saw a couple of times when Auburn was visiting Adam, her like ex-boyfriend who passed away and who she has a child with. And that was kind of like the big thing that was about to be revealed. Like how did they know each other? And it felt kind of just like, and the fact that five years ago, he saw her in a hospital bedroom uh, being super vulnerable with her like ex-boyfriend, boyfriend at the time. And him being just so completely like obsessed and kind of possessive over her felt quite weird. Some red flags that Owen gave me were he dumped his ex-girlfriend Hannah because she didn't know where the palindrome was. Oh, and is that literally all that you care about? That people know what a freaking palindrome is? <laughs> he also called his cat after himself. And I just don't know, that makes me feel like so uncomfortable. Like what if I get a dog myself and I'm like, ooh, she reminds me a lot of me. Let's call my dog Sabine. <laughs> I just, I just don't like that kind of train of thought. After 200 pages when they had sex, Owen was talking to Auburn and saying like, tell me I deserve you. Like, why do you want people to tell them 
during sex that you deserve them. You also have this whole situation of Auburn having to do with Lydia, who is the mother of Adam, her ex-boyfriend, and the hatred that Lydia has for Auburn is like totally not explained. And I feel like that would have been a great type of situation to dive more into. I mean, of course, some people are just like savages and hate others for no specific reason, but it just felt like so random. And I wanted more information about that whole situation. Also the relationship with Trey with Adam's brother that like Auburn was like, yeah, I don't want to have a relationship with him, but you know what? Just let's do it. Trey is a stalker. It's such a toxic relationship. He's such a toxic person. And like Auburn completely realizes that her son is kind of at stake here. So it's a very difficult situation, but I also feel like it was so one dimensional. Trey assaults Auburn. He, I think like he put her hand in her trousers or like they almost had sex. And then Auburn's roommate kind of like comes up into the room with Trey's gun because he's a police officer. He left the gun and it's like, get off of my roommate. I cannot find the exact quote from Emery, the super awkward roommate, but like Auburn has just been assaulted like a traumatic experience right and then her awkward roommate says like a weird joke and i feel like if someone was just sexually assaulted like even the most awkward people they would not make that type of comment really quickly after that assault scene auburn has sex with owen and like everyone deals with their own like trauma and their own assault so i'm not judging people who do do this but it felt so not worked out properly in this bug like we kind of just like flew over the assault and then she has sex with the love interest it feels like such a big thing to put that in your book and then to just like quickly move on to the next supposed to be steamy sex scene. It made me feel so uncomfortable and it just felt like it confessed things were just completely glanced over and they like just happened there to kind of like move the plot forward instead of actually sitting down, taking a look at those themes and properly working them out. Also, you can definitely kind of tell that this book is old. I think it has been written like six years ago or something, but weird slut shaming type of double standard sentences are put into this book and also just certain scenes made me cringe. Owen doesn't want Auburn to have the little seashell soaps into her bathroom because he could not stand the idea of someone loving those soap shells as much as he does. My point is this book doesn't make any sense. It was easy to read. Colleen Hoover's writing style is kind of addictive but like I said I know her books aren't the best. I know they're kind of bad but this was actually this was actually one of the worst books that I've ever read. Last, but definitely not least, I picked up Beach Read by Emily Henry. And I read this during my vacation on Bonaire. I just came back, has the bags under my eyes because I'm still like trying to fight off a jet lag. But I did not get to review Beach Read by the beach while I was on vacation, which I think is just a super missed opportunity, but you know, we gotta deal with it. I did have an amazing vacation and this book is now my favorite romance book of all time. Oh my God, it was so good. It had been so long since my anxiety has really been popping up this year that I have been able to just like read a book without feeling guilty about it and being completely sucked into the story and just wanting to read this book every single minute of the day. And I miss that feeling so much. So I'm so grateful for this one. Plus it's a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be initially because of the fun cover, because of the nice title. But we follow two authors, January who writes romance novels and Gus who writes more of like the dark literary stuff. But they both have to deal with a writer's block. And basically they are neighbors at this beautiful lake house and they decide to kind of like team up and write each other's novels. And during that time, they get to know each other a bit better. They have much more in common than they initially think and romance happens. I mean, come on, this is a romance log. The fact that romance is gonna happen in these books is not a spoiler. January has to deal with the fact that her dad has just passed away. This is not a spoiler. This really, really gets told early on in the book. And the romance that her parents had wasn't as like fairy tale esque as she thought that it used to be. And she's just struggling a lot with herself as well. And Gus, I don't really want to talk about what he is currently dealing with because that gets told later on in the book. I love the way that these heavier themes were being dealt with. It did not feel like just a romance novel. And Emily Henry also has like a complete discussion on how the romance genre is kind of like always being sh upon like people always have an opinion on it that it definitely has like a whole stigma around it still so i really loved reading about that discussion too and just the chemistry between january and gus was worked out 
so well. They're kind of like rivals at the beginning of the story, so it's maybe like a rivals to lovers type of romance. I just loved, loved, loved it. And I do have people we meet on vacation or you and me on vacation. I don't know, the US and UK titles are different. I do have that at my other place at home home, so I will definitely be picking that one up next month. And I know that Emily Henry has also just come out with this book called Book Lovers. I want to get my hands on all of the books that Emily Henry writes because I feel like I will love all of them. So I gave this book a five out of five stars and this is my absolute winner for this video. And I'm so happy that I read it because of TikTok. So that was my reading TikTok romance only books video. What am I saying? I don't know. I will definitely be reading more TikTok books in the future because I feel like until so far I have gotten some solid recommendations and I need more Emily Henry, Ali Hazelwood ask romances. Colleen Hoover is kind of like my guilty pleasure author. I know that I won't really love her work, but it's just really easy to read. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or on the button down below. Do not forget to check out Anna Luisa's Mother's Day sale. A link to that will be in the description box down below. Check it out and hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!